Now we were discussing about uh, a second order effect in a in a MOSFET, and uh, and the effect that we were discussing is essentially uh, the outcome of the fact that if we apply a VDS, right? If we have, so till now what we've been the model of MOSFET that we have we are accustomed to is is this in saturation the current is so this is the model we have been using uh, so far uh, in plain english this essentially means that the current between the drain and the source is solely dependent on the voltage difference between the gate and the source Right, and it is more importantly, it is independent of the voltage difference between the drain and the source. Right, so which essentially means that if I apply a battery between the drain and the source, as long as the transistor is in saturation, I keep on varying the battery voltage. This current is not going to change. Right, so so that essentially another way of characterizing the same thing is it's a current source. If I if you have a current source, you change the voltage across the current source, the current doesn't change. So the model of transistor that we have been using till now is that of an ideal current source. It's a controlled current source because the controlling terminal is the gate and the source. Uh, but between the drain and the source, it acts like an ideal current source. But then in the previous lecture, we saw that this is probably uh, not a very efficient or uh, very, uh, it's not a correct way of, uh, of characterizing a transistor because this is not fully true and the additional factor that comes in is is this where uh, where lambda n if we set lambda n to be zero right if we have set, set the lambda to be zero then uh, uh, then uh, the idvds characteristics reduces to the original characteristics that we have been dealing with now, what is that effect of this lambda n times VDS or lambda times VDS? The effect is that it introduces some dependence of the uh, of the of VDS on on the current, right? Which means that it it ceases to become a, a ideal current source. It's imperfect current source. Which means that there, is, if you change the VDS now, it's not as if the current will remain constant. It will change. Now, how much it will change by obviously depends on that factor lambda. Right, if lambda is very large, then I mean a small amount of VDS change can lead to a lot of current change. If lambda is very small, now what is small? Small and large depends on on this factor, right? If lambda times VDS is much smaller than one, right? If lambda times VDS is much smaller than one, then obviously it seems like I can neglect that lambda times VDS with respect to one. Or in other words, the effect of lambda, the effect of this additional correction factor. On on the current uh, on the current is negligible. In that case, we can assume that transistor is probably still acting like a very good current source. Not ideal, but very good current source. But if lambda times VDS is very large, then it's not a very good current source. And it, I mean, we can reason that it makes sense for this term to be to be small because whoever is making the devices, right? Lambda is a device property. Whoever is making these devices will give us a device in which lambda times VDS should be less, less than one. Otherwise, there's no point because we will not be able to make an amplifier. And why is that so? Because if I see the Y22, right, or Y22 of this, which we characterize as the conductance between the drain and the source, that is equal to lambda times IDS, right? So again, this is equal to del IDS, del VDS which is approximately lambda n times VDS. So if, if Y22 is large or GDS is large, then, then what happens if you go back to the two port network model, the requirement was Y22 should be zero or very small. If Y22 becomes very large, then it doesn't become a good amplifier, right? So it, So whoever is making the device, it is, it is their job to give you a device for which lambda n times VDS is, is small enough. Now, what is small enough can be reasoned out later, but it cannot be a dominant factor in this uh, one plus lambda VDS term, okay? So, 
Yeah, sorry, right? Thank you. Lambda times IDS. Correct. So, uh, so yeah, so this lambda times uh, IDS term has to be much smaller. Or, uh, now, what is smaller and lesser that we can figure out from the, from the small signal model? What is small signal model? The initial small signal model of our transistor was this. So if I, so this was a small signal model where I had GM times VGS here. And after we put in this correction term, after Y22 comes into picture, so we have, we have this additional term, uh, uh, additional conductance GDS that comes into, uh, comes into this, into this model. So now if we again go back to the two port network model and we apply an input and take the output, uh, in, in the input that we were applying was here. And the output that we were taking were from this terminal, right? So let me use a different color. GL or 1 over RL uh, uh, is the load. So if we take the output across V naught, so V naught over V i was becoming how much? Minus G M by G D S plus G L, right? Again, this V G S becomes equal to V i. So this current is G M times V i. This current is flowing into a parallel combination of of two conductances, right? GDS and GL. When conductances come in parallel, they add up. So GM times VI over GDS plus GL is the voltage that is developed across the load GL, right? And this becomes a V naught over VI. If you are more comfortable in terms of writing, in, uh, if you're more comfortable writing in terms of resistances, this is GM times RDS parallel RL. Okay, so now, uh, now note that here, this GDS or one over RDS is a is a model resistance. It's not an actual resistance. You you can look for it. It doesn't exist if, uh, in uh, in the circuit. So it's the small signal model of the of uh, of the resistance that signifies that is essentially pointing to the the fact that if you change VDS, there will be a current change in the transistor. Okay. So now, if for example, if GDS becomes much larger than GL or RDS becomes much smaller than RL, right? So what will be the output? It will be GM over GDS, right? Minus GM over GDS times VI, right? So if the GDS becomes much larger than GL or RDS, is much lesser than RL, then V naught over VI becomes minus GM times RDS or minus GM over GDS, right? So it becomes, uh, so, it, so in other words, if RL is infinite, right? Let's say there is a capacitive load. If there is a capacitive load if RL is infinite. In the earlier model of the transistor that we were using, that you would have gotten a gain of infinite. Right? If RL were infinite and GDS were not there, then the gain would have been infinite. But now you see that even if RL is infinite, the gain is actually not infinite. Right? Because there is an effect of GDS. So now, uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing, right? Because ultimately we'd like to get as much gain out of the transistor as possible. In the earlier model that we were using, right? The transistor was giving us an illusion that you can give, get infinite gain. If you keep on increasing RL, it's not always in your control, but if, if, you, if you keep on increasing RL, you can get infinite gain. But a correct, after we introduce this correction, it seems like it's not, even if you keep on increasing RL, there will be a clipping. There is the, not a clipping, there will be a saturation of the gain that you can get. And the saturated gain that you can get of a transistor is GM over, R, GM over GDS or GM times RDS, right? 
So this, this is an intrinsic property of the transistor because GM is a pro property of the transistor. GDS is also a property of the transistor, right? Which is, it's obviously user controlled because GM and GDS both are functions of current, right? You can tweak around, you can play around the values, but it is still a property of the transistor, okay? So, and this is, that's why this is also called the intrinsic gain of the transistor. Okay, so, so why is this important? This is important because if the intrinsic gain of the transistor, let's say is 10, and I'd ask you to make me an amplifier of gain 100, you'll not be able to make, right? Because ultimately it will be, it, uh, it will be limited to the intrinsic gain. You cannot get more than intrinsic gain of the transistor. Right. So, in other words, if you if you if you look at the uh, small signal model, the maximum gain that you can get out of this is when GL is zero or RL is infinite, and the maximum gain is GM times RDS. Right. And if I tell you that the intrinsic gain of the transistor, or you did your calculations and you found that intrinsic gain of the transistor is ten, and the designer is or the spec sheet is telling you that make me a gain transistor of gain, make me an amplifier of gain of hundred. You cannot use a simple configuration like this to get to a gain of 100. Okay, so so that is something that we should uh, we should keep at the back of our mind. Okay, uh, okay. Any questions so far? Okay, fine. So let's see uh, some implications of these uh, 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 of the limited intrinsic gain, right? So the intrinsic gain again, if we neglect GDS in the in, in the simplistic model of the transistor that we had been using till previous class, the intrinsic gain would have been infinite because GDS where zero was zero, GM times infinite or GM by zero is essentially infinite. But now again, the in intrinsic get, gain gets clipped. So one moment when the intrinsic gain hits a maxima, you have to explore something else. What else can be done? Okay. Okay. So let's, let's look at some of the implications. So again, Let's go back to the common source amplifier. I am not showing the biasing here. Uh, even though I am trying a transistor, uh, I am implying that I am only talking about the uh, small signal model because transistor is a compact way of, of showing the same. And let's say I have And let's say I have a current bias here. Again, I am not showing. I am not showing how the transistor is biased and all. Let's assume you have you have made a you have made a, a transistor in which things are biased properly. So, in other words, what I am saying is that in the incremental sense, this this current source will go off. It's an open circuit. And now you have a resistance connected here. In the ideal model, right, in the earlier model of the transistor, this current would have been GM times VI, and this entire current would have flown into RL, right? So the voltage that would have accrued here is minus GM times RL times VI, right? So now what has changed? So this is the initial model. So what has changed now? If I include the effect of GDS, So how will the small signal model get affected? So again, if you are more uh, comfortable using small signal models, so let's do this. So this is GM times VI. This is VI. This was RL. So what else should I incorporate? A GDS or RDS? So this is going to get incorporated here. So the way I will draw it is this. I will just put a GDS or RDS here. Again, this essentially means that the way I am sketching, this essentially means that this is the pristine transistor, which only has GM time VI. And I'm just separating the GDS out from the model, right? I don't want to keep on drawing the small signal equivalent every time uh, just to 
get things moving quickly. Okay, so now if this is the case, uh, the way this gain gets modified, it becomes GM times RL parallel RDS times VI. Okay, so now let's investigate what's the problem. I mean, I can understand that, that there will be a gain drop. There will be a gain drop, but uh, more critically, if I take a look at it, what, what is essentially happening in the earlier case, when RDS was not there, all the current that was coming from the GM was flowing into RL, right? So now when we put back this RDS, when we put this RDS back, what is happening? When the current F reaches this node, right? So GM times VI reaches this node. Let me sketch it like this. When the current reaches, for example, this node, it has to make a decision, right? With whether majority of the current will flow into RDS or it will flow into RL. If RL, RDS was not there, the decision was easy, you flow into RL. So now it has to make a decision whether I go into RDS or RL, and the decision is based on the ratio of RL and RDS. Right? If RDS is small, all the current will go into RDS. Most of the current will go into RDS, and otherwise, if the RL is small, most of the current will go into RL. So now, let's say RDS and RL are comparable, comparable, or RL is much larger than RDS. So then obviously, the gain will be limited by the intrinsic gain of the transistor, because all the current GM times VI will or bulk of the current will, uh, will tend to flow into RDS and it will develop a voltage which is approximately GM times RDS times VI. Okay, so this is that something that we don't want. Okay, so now if we if we don't want this, what is the possible solution? So let me let me let me sketch the issue here separately so that we can understand what is going on. So again, uh, let me simplify it further. So let's say this is a current source of value GM times VI. It has an internal resistance of RDS, okay? The requirement is I want all this current to flow into RL. If I simply connect it here, this current will get divided between RDS and RL. Okay, so the requirement is I want all the GMVI or bulk of the GMVI current to flow into RL. So can you suggest a solution based on whatever we have done till now? So again, uh, just for just to ensure that we are on the same page, if I connect this directly, only a fraction of a small fraction of GM times VI can flow into RL if RL is much larger than RDS. Let's take that assumption, RL is much larger than RDS. Right, if RL is much larger than RDS, only a small fraction of GM times VI will flow into RL. That is not what we want. We want entire or majority, major fraction of GM times VI to flow into RL, which means direct connection of these two nodes is not a good thing. So which means that I have to put a block here So we have to put a blo block there, which can pass this entire current into RL. So among the control sources that we know, right, VCVS, VCCS, CCVS, blah, 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 which is the most appropriate one? Current control, current source, right? Because ultimately, if I want all this current, GMVI, to flow into a block, the expected output input impedance of that block will be close to zero, or much smaller than RDS, right? So if a current flows in, and then if we can ensure that the output impedance of whatever block that you have put is much smaller, is much uh, larger than RL, then whatever current goes in comes out through RL, then you are done, right? So essentially, from the input perspective, from the input perspective of the input impedance perspective of the block, we want a block which can invite in the current which means that we want something which has a very small output input impedance, right? It has to be a current control block. 
right? So, and it has to be, it also needs to act like a current source at the output because we want all the current to flow into, into RL. So essentially we are looking for a CCCS. We are looking for a current control current source to be put between this load and, and our transistor. Do you agree? Clear? Okay. So till now, uh, the single transistor configuration of a current control current source that we have done is common gate source drain what common gate configuration right it's a common gate configuration so again for for recall purposes this was the incrementally this was the model so if i if, if i apply our non ideal current source here and if this is R in, or rather, let's say R source, and let's say something is connected here, RL. What is the input impedance that we saw? That was one over GM. Okay. So as long as we can ensure one over GM is much lesser than RS, then bulk of this current will flow in into the uh, into the transistor. And when it flows into the transistor, it has to come from the other come through the other side. So we are we are good, right? So all we have to do is to replace this box with a common gate configuration. Okay. So so now let's replace replace the same. So this is our common source topology. So let me not put the current source right now. So we had this RDS here. This current was GM times VI. So instead of connecting this directly, we'll put a common gate topology here. So the common gate topology, topology is nothing but in the incremental domain, the gate is grounded, source is connected to whatever, uh, whichever current source that I am trying to feed in. And from the output side, this is connected here. Okay. Okay, fine. So this is our common gate configuration. So won't that second transistor will be having? Yes, it will have. That's the next thing. Right. So, uh, so, uh, so, yeah. So let me uh, let me finish this, and I'll come to that. So, so now this becomes the this becomes the small signal equivalent of our transistor uh, of our new new topology, right? So since this becomes a new uh, small signal equivalent of new topology, two things needs to be done. Whenever you explore a new topology, by when you explore, you synthesize a new topology, first thing you have to do is analyze and see if the input output relationship is what we indeed, what we want it to be, or there is some difference. And second thing is, how do you go about biasing the topology? Right? This is a small signal equivalent. Simply connecting it like this is not going to work. You have to bias it appropriately, feed signals in, so on and so forth. That is one, and, this, and the other thing is, we have to do a small signal analysis of the input between the input and the output to figure out whether the synthesis that we have done from logic makes sense. Okay, so let's do the second one first. We'll do the uh, biasing later. Okay, so so let's see. Uh, his point was, see, I mean, we don't have this ideal transistor. If we had this ideal transistor, we didn't have to bother with doing all these things. So how can I not use not uh, how can I neglect GDS of the top transistor? Correct. So, so that we indeed cannot neglect. So this transistor will also have its own GDS. Let's see, call it GDS two. Let's call this one GDS one. Uh, let's call this GM one. Let's call this GM two. And this is say V. Let me call this node VX. So what will be the, what should I replace 
the uh, I mean, what should the small signal current flowing through the top transistor? No, what I meant was, so this transistor is, so this is M2. So what will be this current in terms of these node voltages? GM2 VX in the direction shown, right? Going up. So this is GM2 VX. Okay, great. So now the logic is this. Uh, so what will be the amount of current So I have to find out what is the amount of current that is flowing between the M1 and the M2 stretch, right? That line. If I know what is this current, then this current will be the same because ultimately things which are going into this box have to come out from the other side, right? It cannot vanish inside. There is no other vanishing path. So if some current goes into that box, it has to come out from the other side. So all you need to figure out what goes in, okay? So if I have to figure out what goes in, what are the information that I require? We need two information or rather one information to be honest. So we need to figure out what is the impedance looking up, right? If I know the impedance, then I know what would be the current division, right? Again, uh, so, so this is the current or this is GM times VI. So this is GDS1. I need, and something is connected here. What? What fraction of current that is going in or coming out of this? To gather that information, I need to know what is this R in. If I know that R in, then it's easy. It's a division between R in and that RDS or GDS. Right. So, so the first thing to do is to figure out what is the R in for that configuration. So, so let's split the split the analysis into subparts. So, what we are essentially trying to do is to find out what will be the R in of this configuration. Okay, so in order to figure out what is the RN of this, what should I do? Apply V test, find out I test, same old, same old. So this voltage, this current will be how much? This current will be GM times V test in the po direction pointing up, right? And then what will happen? So it will appear. So basically you'll have to do a KCL at this node, right? You do a KCL at this node and tell me how much, what fraction of the, I mean, what will be this I test? So, so again, this I test goes in, so I test has to come out. Right? So if I test comes out, this voltage will be I test times RL. Right? So uh, if I do a ACL at that node, what should I get? I should get GM times V test plus this current is V test minus I test times RL over RDS. So V test minus I test RL over RDS2, right? So this should be equal to I test. This is GM1, right? So, so essentially we club the same terms together. GM1 plus one over RDS2, I will write is as GDS2 becomes equal to I test here one plus 
आर एल ओवर आर डी एस पी और आर एल टाइम्स जी डी एस पी सो पी टेस्ट ओवर आई टेस्ट बिकम्स वन प्लस आर एल ओवर आर डी एस टू वन प्लस आर एल टाइम्स जी डी एस टू बाई जी एम वन प्लस जी डी एस टू Okay, so squeeze sanity check. If this were an ideal transistor, where R D S two would have been infinite or G D S two would have been zero, I should have got what? One over G M, right? One over G M two, right? So if I put one over G, if G D S two equal to zero, that reduces to one over uh, G M two, right? Why did I put G M one here? G M two. And this is M two. Okay, so uh, it would have been one over G M two, and and that that checks out from the sanity check uh, check test uh, check test sanity test checks out. Uh, so so at least we know that it's not widely off. But now what we see is that if if we meet the condition that G M two, so if gm2 is much larger than the ds2 and in this case rl gds2 is much less than 1 or in other words rl is much less than rds right so it seems like uh, we 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 are still in that condition where the Uh, it's almost behaves like an ideal transistor, right? So if these two conditions are met, then V test over I test is is one over G M two. This is almost as if as if R D S two were not there, right? But obviously you are going to then ask me is that this condition is difficult to meet? That's why we had to put something in between. And how can I Simply say that this is uh, this is what it is. So we cannot simply say that. So if we cannot simply say that, the other condition, other stuff that we have to figure out is. Uh, so this is the this is the this is the input impedance. This is R in, right? So this is this R in. So if this is the R in, what we have to do, we have to figure out. We we are not trying to figure out whether. This R in is uh, yeah. whether this R how this R in compares with R L. We are trying to figure out how the R in compares with the with the G D S one with R D S one, right? Because ultimately, what we are looking for, we are looking for this impedance. Right? If 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 this impedance is much smaller than GDS one, then all the current flows in, or bulk of the current flows in, right? If that happens, then we don't have to bother. So the what we are essentially trying to do is to limit, is to remove the dependency of RL and bring in another dependency, so that that dependency become is in in a designer's control. RL is very often not in designer's control, but if we can convert the dependency of RL into something which is in designer's control, then we are good. Okay, so it seems like by putting a current control, current source in 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 between, we have been able to change the uh, looking in impedance from R L to something which is to some extent a designer's control. Okay, so if if that is the case, for example, so something that is in designer's control is this G M and G D S, right? If for example GM is much larger than GDS, which is in our control because GM is a function of current. GDS is also a function of current. An intrinsic gain of the transistor has to be much greater than one. Otherwise, there is no point of building anything, right? So, if the intrinsic gain of the transistor is much greater than one, then I can neglect GDS as compared to GM, right? If I neglect GDS as compared to GM, right? So, only we are constraining on this condition, not the other one. So, then. If GM two is much greater than GDS two, then 
a v test over i test becomes what 1 over gm2 plus rl sorry plus rl times gds2 by gm2 right so i just neglected a gds2 from this uh, from that uh, from that term so this i can again rewrite as 1 over gm2 plus rl over some uh, a int where a int is the intrinsic gain of the transistor right so a int or a v int let me say voltage gain right This is the intrinsic gain of M2. Okay. So you see that this is the looking in impedance into that common, uh, comp into that uh, CCCS block. So this is the R in of the CCCS. So the input impedance of the CCCS is 1 over GM2 plus RL over the intrinsic gain of the transistor. So now, what is so good about this? If we didn't have the CCCS, again, let me sketch the circuit for your reference. So let's take two cases where we had gm1 times v in to be the input. This is RDS1, and this connects directly to RL. And in other case, and in the other case, we have GM one times V in, we have RDS one, and we have a CCCS, then it connects to RL. Okay, so here the impedance in the left hand side circuit, the impedance this side was RL. In this case, the impedance this side is 1 over GM plus RL by the intrinsic gain of M2. Right? So, assuming that you can design GM to be much greater than 1 over GM to be much lesser than RL, right? So, you see that this configuration can give an in can give a uh, looking in impedance, which is kind of independent of RL or much lesser than RL. I shouldn't say independent. It can be designed to be much lesser than RL because the intrinsic gain of a transistor can be designed to be greater than one. It cannot be infinite, but it can at least be like one order higher than, than one, let's say. It can be 10, 20 or something. For example, if, if the intrinsic gain of uh, of a transistor is 10, that is GM over GDS is 10, which you can safely get in modern technologies also, you can get gains of 10. So if you can get a 10, a gain of 10, then you are essentially saying that I have been able to reduce the dependence, I have been able to transform the resistance looking in impedance from RL to RL by 10. Right? Make sense? Or does not make sense? Need a feedback from you, otherwise I don't know. Yes or no? Doesn't make sense. Okay, fine. So let's take some numbers. So let's say uh, maybe I mean okay. Let's say this. Uh, let's say that in a certain technology, you get GM over GDS to be equal to ten. This is not a. I mean, this is not out of the box number. This you can get in even in pretty sophisticated technologies. You can get GM over GDS to be ten of this order. So let's take some numbers. So let's say uh, RDS is 10 kilo ohm. Let's say this RL is also 10 kilo ohm. Okay, so this is also 10 kilo ohm. This RL is also 10 kilo ohm. So the amount of current that flows in in this side is minus GM1 V in by 2. Get split equally between two 10 kilo ohm resistances. Okay. So let's also take some values. If GM over GDS is 10, then uh, 
Then GM is how much? Uh, RDS is 10 kilo ohm, which is 10 kilo ohm is 100 microsecond, micro siemens. So uh, GM will be one milli siemens, right? So, so what is the impedance looking in in this case? The impedance looking in here was 10 kilo ohm. What is the impedance looking in this side? Two kilo ohm, right? So because one over GM is one and RL intrinsic gain of the transistor is 10, RL was 10. So this is one kilo, this is one kilo. So this looking up, this impedance is two kilo ohm, right? So you see that? Now the current division will be between a 2 kilo ohm resistance and a 10 kilo ohm resistance, not a 10 and 10, right? So what fraction will go in? So the amount of current that will flow in, so this, or rather this, in this case, I out, whatever comes out is whatever goes in. I out becomes GM1 times V in minus in this, because the direction is the opposite, times times this, this whatever, two kilo ohm by two kilo plus 10 kilo. Sorry, I mean, I did the other way around, right? It goes in the conductance domain, it splits like this. In the resistance domain, it is like 10 by 10 plus two, right? So this is significantly better than connecting one resistance directly. Okay, uh, or significantly better than not using a current control current source. Okay, so uh, so I hope you at least appreciate the fact that putting a current control for current source or a common get stage between the common source and the load helps in pushing out most of the current into the RN. And this, uh, so so the other thing that I want you to appreciate is the evolution of a of a, of, a, of a topology, because let's say you have a process or you have you are using some devices in which you, the intrinsic gain of the transistor is by default large by large i mean let's say it's 100 or let's say it's 1000 i don't know. so in that case probably for similar types of load you will not need this ccs to be placed right so if for example in this particular case in, in this topology in this topology if you are using another technology which is not CMOS technology, where GM over GDS is, let's say, is 1000 for some reason, doesn't exist, but let's say GM over GDS is 1000 for some reason, then you probably don't need to put anything, any CCCS in between the load and your common source stage. Because for the similar types of RL, most of the current will choose, choose to flow into RL and not get divided into its intrinsic resistance, right? So, so the requirement of whether you have to put certain stages also depends on what technology or what type of devices you are using. Okay, so, so that's why you will see, even though the principles of developing a circuit is the same, regardless of what devices are using, sometimes the circuits look quite different if the devices change. That's because they have some intrinsic properties which are which necessitate, necessitates the extra, extra contractions. Yes. Okay. So you are, uh, you are, um, if I understand correctly, what you are trying to say. So if we order such that they work all the people, then we will have a longer interval. Yes. So what I'll answer that in two two contexts. So his question is, seems like we this seems like a way of uh, of really of transferring the current from the main device to the RL. We have another handle. So uh, is it necessary for this device to be always in saturation? That's essentially what we are saying, right? So if in this device, the bottom device, the common source device, even if it's not in saturation, the effect of not being in saturation is that it will have its own 
non zero y2 to non zero y gds right so if it's not in saturation it has something so be it i have some which is here so i'll just put it in i'll just push the current through it so then if we can do that then it seems like the amount of the overdrive voltage or vds that is need for the bottom device need not be as much to keep it in saturation right the saturation condition can i mean uh, condition uh, can be relaxed Right. The requirement of the transistor being in saturation need not be present. Right? To some extent, that is true, and that people do. But the issue is not that. The issue is if we are looking for large gain, then we would like to ensure that even if this RK is that I put this RK is small, right? So then we are essentially saying we can get uh, similar performance with a normal compressor amplifier by putting in this PLS. Right. So, so I think another I, another uh, non-technical example. So you see uh, the cost of electrons over the years have kind of remained the same. Right. A laptop tends to cost a similar amount now what it used to cost ten years back. But the amount of functionality that has spread in is very large. So one might argue that for the same functionality I can reduce the cost. Right. That a laptop which was operating at some cellular or Intel semiconductor processor 10 years back can be sold today at probably one tenth the cost. Right? So the data is between do I do I reduce the functionality, reduce the cost, or keep the cost same and increase the functionality. Right? Similar set of appeals here. In the sense that do I am I looking for same gain with longer region or am I looking for larger gain in the same uh, in the same saturation? Right. So essentially, what we are looking for is can we increase the gain? In that case, you have to deal with the fact that you have to keep the transistor in saturation. But your point is taken in some designs, we, people tend to do that also. Right. So we, we uh, if the transistor slightly goes in linear, it's okay as long as the overall gain relationships are okay. Okay. okay so before we stop, there is one jargon. Uh, so this whatever this GM1, GM2, uh, GM1, GDS, and whatever we have been doing till now, this effect is called is arising because the channel is getting again. If I go back to the uh, picture of the device in saturation, the initial assumption was the channel gets pinched off, and after that it remains as is, right? But now we are seeing that if we increase VDS, the channel is also reducing. So channel is getting modulated based on the VDS that we are applying. So that's why it's called channel length modulation, right? This effect is called channel length modulation. So, so appearance of GDS in a transistor model is due to channel Length modulation or abbreviated as CLM, right? So we'll uh, from uh, from now on we'll see what are the effects of CLM and how uh, our uh, systems get transistors get, our circuits get affected from the next class. Okay, thank you.